me get started. Okay, so this potentially is what this beautiful app is what we built last time. Now, is that I'm going to just put that there. So um, I know we're making our way through this thing. And we're building a pretty crappy app at the moment, but it's okay. We're learning, right? As we go, and it's like it's cool to fiddle and see how stuff works in in Elm. So anyone new, Yanni and um, and Ashad, uh, we are busy learning. So the, the idea of these sessions is just like an hour every week. Was it every two weeks? I don't know. Um, to just talk about pure functional programming. So not so much about functional, but actually pure functional. So that means. Those are those languages that really uh, separate very formally um, uh, things like effects and uh, side effects and even sometimes like the order that things happen in a programming language. Um, so pure functional languages, it, I mean, it's a very broad definition, but in my, when I talk about pure functional languages, I'm talking about language like Haskell, like PureScript, and um, and Elm. So Elm, we're, we're we're playing with now. Elm is very much like a web. It's a web-only language, really. It's designed only for building web applications. Very opinionated in how it does that. It's got a very strict architecture. Compiles obviously to JavaScript, and it runs in. Uh, it obviously runs in your browser. You can't run it server-side. Um, it's like not its design. It's not designed as a general-purpose programming language. It's not something that compiles to general JavaScript. Um, it compiles only to a, a JavaScript that will execute in a browser, um, which is pretty cool, actually. So it's, it's quite nice in that it's like super constrained in what it does, and it's very opinionated. It's not just a language, but it's also kind of a runtime included in that. So um, like the, the way that Elm executes code is not, um, not like a general purpose language where you would tell it to do stuff. It's like... It, it runs within its own runtime. Um, yeah, uh, you'll see. But it, it's also a pure functional language, so that's really interesting. It's also very simple. It's a very simply, very constrained language in what you can do. Um, and so it's very easy to learn and pick up, actually. So we were just building and playing around with, with Elm. Um, and so we built this beautiful app, and people must remind me what exactly the hell it does. But I think we started out with so if I click reset, that thing goes to naught. You can see this thing generating sort of like random numbers. Over here, you can see this thing's like incrementing. I can press plus and these random numbers being generated. I can minus things. I can press random and I can get a new random number. So um, that's pretty crap, but um, but good. So I think last week we were talking about subscriptions, right? I think we went through subscriptions. So we talked about the Elm architecture which is made up of a couple of functions. The most important one is probably this update function, which takes some kind of command, your model. So your, like your list of commands that can come into your application, uh, the model that is what the state of your application as it is now, and what you must return. Oh, sorry, these are actually called messages. Sorry, this is your message. That's the type of the message. So update if I hover over it. Um, we can see here's here's the concrete types I'm using for my update function, but down below is the sort of like the generic version of this um, of this function. And the lowercase stuff means um, what does the lowercase stuff mean actually, Damien? Because your camera's on, I'm going to ask you what what do the lowercase things mean in a function definition like this versus the uppercase versions? They're like variables. So they're type variables. Yeah, so so yeah, exactly. Type variables, that's 100% the right way to describe it. So you might not be, in general, in mainstream languages, too familiar with type variables, um, but you actually are. So in C Sharp or something like that, you would have a list of type int. You know, this int thing here is where I'm specifying the, the I'm making concrete the type because maybe list is like, defined as list of type T or something. So T being the variable, right? So T is the variable there. And then when I do that, I'm saying I'm specifically saying that T is an int. Um, yeah, so it's a type variable. It's not a variable, um, even though there's no such concept of variables in a pure functional language. 
Um, it's more like a value or a placeholder or something. But yeah, it's a type variable. So I'm specifying in my update function that message is of type my message and model is of type mod model with a capital M. This is my model, my message. And what it returns is like this tuple and it returns a model and a command of my messages. So, which is interesting. So it returns the new state and any new messages it would like to generate. If that makes sense. So it's kind of like a loop. You can see this thing is like a, it's like a loop. You know, take your update. Here's your, here's the, here's the thing that happened, the event. Here's a model of your state right now. What do you want to do? And so the new state you must return and any new events you want to propagate. So like when you look at this, actually, like that's all, that's like an event driven system. Like that is the definition of an event driven system, right? Some events, what is the state now? What is the new state? And are you generating any new events? Like perfect. Like with that very simple definition, you can see that this thing just loops and updates state over time, generating events. So you can generate events in there, but you could also have events come from outside this function and that's where things like subscriptions come from so the idea of the subscription is for events that potentially are coming from outside of the scope of your application and so what could those be uh, for example the time changes in outside of your 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 application your application doesn't maintain the time the time comes from something outside of your app um, and things like random numbers also don't come from inside your application they come from outside yeah uh, the application. So those are really what subscriptions are for, but they come into the same update function, right? Um, so if we just look quickly at subscriptions, we can see we go sub.batch. This means we saw this batch idea earlier. We could just, um, yeah, we saw the batching idea where you can subscribe to more than one thing. Batch, interestingly, though, if you look at its signature, it takes a list of subscriptions of type of message and it returns a single subscription of message. So you can almost see that batch has got a sub, the, the type of sub has some way of like joining subs together to create one bigger sub. You know, it's the same as like a list. If I took a, a list and a list and I returned another list, it's like I could concatenate those things together. So the idea of sub is that it's like concatenatable, right? It sounds, it feels like it's a concatenatable type of thing, something that can, that can be grouped together, maybe or joined or something. Um, and that's quite an interesting concept. Um, what else did we figure out here? Yeah, so we've got the update function and then we've got a view function, which is like super simple. What does view do? It takes your model, the state of the world right now, and all it's asking you to do, please, is to just generate the HTML um, of what your app must look like at this point in time based on this state. The other interesting cool thing though, is it's specific to, again, the type of my the types of events that this HTML could generate because remembering that HTML can generate events, right? Like a button click is a, is a is an event generated by some HTML. It didn't necessarily get generated by your update function, right? Um, or what else could be something generated by HTML? Yeah, like potentially like I don't know, click a drop down or a, if I press back on the browser, maybe that generates me an HTML event. No, probably not. Probably some other kind of event, but HTML can generate events, right? Your DOM, like the DOM in the in the browser, can generate events, um, which totally makes sense. And we can see that we actually do do that. So we we handling uh, button clicks. So here's a button. So this button has the property on click decrement, and decrement is event types decrement. So as you add new events, you add to your model. Uh, you add your messages sorry, or to this type of your set of events um, and then down in the html world you can tell buttons that when they are clicked they must generate a very specific type of event called decrement and decrement is of type my message so we're good it's like it's type checked at that level there um happy with that yeah i think i don't know some of the new guys might not be happy with that but maybe we could we could we could reboot Back to the beginning for some of the the elm syntactic stuff because i think uh, that might be uh, quite hairy um okay so what should we do next does anyone have any opinion on what do we do next with our amazing app that we have built i think we had some long-term thing to try and call the chuck norris api am i right was that the idea is that yep. still the, the idea 
So we can see we could call get from this thing. Um, let's just see, is it like so simple that I could just kill this thing and it gives it to me? Wow, it is really simple, cool. So we could just call get on this thing and we get back some sort of JSON thing. So I should write that to jq dot. We'll get it nicely formatted so we can see if we if we call get on that, we get some back some cool JSON, which somewhere is it? Oh, there in value, we get like a Chuck Norris joke. Amazing. Um, so one of the things we, we thought of doing is like, let's, should we build a button that when we press it, hits this API, Chuck Norris gives us back that pauses the JSON in the, or first of all, it triggers off that request, gets a response, has to pause the JSON, and then it grabs the value out of that thing. Um, and how would we do that in an incredibly type safe way? Keeping in mind, everything in Elm is completely type safe. So JavaScript not being type safe, right? And J JSON generally is not a type safe uh, kind of structure. You can't validate JSON for correctness. It has no schema. Right? Um, uh, but in Elm, we would have to. We, we know we would have to. So should we do that? Should we try this out? Um, is there any other questions you have on this stuff? Comfortable with the rest of it? Demi, let's just go. Okay, we'll just go. Um, so what we're probably looking for is like, how do we do HTTP requests with Elm, right? So let's start there. Um, and look at that, it's like, like already very nice. So we can see that there's a requests thing, we can do a get URL, and there's this weird expect thing. Um, creates a GET request, and we can kind of see it takes this. So I, I, I'm not sure if this notation looks good to you. Does that look right? So we, if we say GET is, I'll just paste it here and reformat it. So GET is a function that takes as its first parameter something and gives us a something. Does, are you happy with that? Davesh, Damien, does this make sense to you? What does get do? Take the URL. Brackets records. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So its so, first parameter is a record, correct? Yeah. All right, cool. And then it returns a command of message, which is yeah. what something else that I don't understand. But, <laughs> but interestingly, We've seen, we've encountered this command of message before. If we look at what our update function does, it can return a command of message. Oh yes. You know, the, so that little command type is like a container, it's a container type. And remembering on every like return of update, we are returning command.none, command.none, command.none. Um, and then one interesting one on that trigger random, when we get the trigger random thingy, we go, hey, batch. Is this the only line? Okay. So uh, I don't think we had to batch this, but um, we do. So that's cool. I don't think we would have to. I think we could have just said, because we're not combining anything here. I think we could just do that. Um, on trigger random, we're saying, hey, Here's a here's a command dot you know command of type message which is random dot generate set random so like generate actually worked almost exactly the same look at what generate did it took a thing and a thing and it gave us back a command message that almost gives you like a sense that um, possibly this get thing could be returned from an update function you know what I mean so command message is can be returned from update in order to do something. You know what I mean? That kind of like, I'm just matching types. I'm just pattern matching with like brain pattern matching, right? It's like, oh, command message of type message. This thing is a command of message. So it's like, oh, so this a get is something I could return as an update-y thing. Does that make sense? So, so let's just do that. Um, let's make ourselves a new button. I wonder if we should turn off all this other crap going on on our app, because it really is crap, right? Um, we just turn that shit off? It really is bad. Um, so let's just say, hey, we don't subscribe to any of these things. Um, let's just be naughty and do it like that. I'm just going to turn that off. So it's a batch of like nothing. Um, does that solve most of our problems? 
No, it still goes. Why? Why does it still go? I'm looking at the wrong thing. Must I restart it? Is it building? Okay, it's not doing stuff now. I think I've, I think when you have a compile error, it's like a, the, this watchy thing down here stops working. Like I obviously had a compile error at some point. Oh no, it didn't. Oh, I don't know. It's like restarting the Elm thing is important every now and then. Um, okay, so we've got it chilled now. So we will make a new button. Let's just start with a new button, right? So we're gonna go button. We know probably that there's some sort of on-click something we have to do here. And we're gonna go get get joke or something, right? Um, right, so I suppose I could take this out, I could save it, and we'll get our cool button, get joke, but when I click it, nothing happens. So I'm gonna put back that cool on-click thing. But we don't know what type it needs to be. Um, so let's just follow it. Did I show you guys hole driven before? Does Elm support holes? I think it does. No. I think that was pure script a while back. Yeah, I, I get confused. I like holes. Or well, maybe I just go question mark. No. Does Elm type holes? So there's this cool idea of type holes. Oh, Elm, why are they not a thing? Once again, things you can't do with Elm. Oh, you can. Underscore is a type hole. Okay. I go underscore. Save it. So it's like whenever you don't know what is it, is, is it? No. That didn't look like. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. I think this is like a request for type holes. And his anyway. proposal for it. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a proposal. And then you'll probably see they said, no, it will confuse people. So don't put it in. And probably it will confuse people. But I like them. But anyway, okay, so there's some sort of thing we want to do here. We want to go on click of question mark, question mark. It would be cool if I just go X. And then like probably the compiler can help us. Um it says I can't find XX variable. Oh, so that's our issue, but it's like on click something. Oh, give us something, please. There's a list, but it wants that. Okay, we don't know. On click five, do that. What does that tell us? The eight element does not match all of the previous ones. The button call produces HTML number, but all the previous elements on the list of HTML of my messages. Okay, so that's what a type hole would tell you. It would say, hey, there's a hole here. What I'm expecting is an H a, a my messages to be in this hole. Um, and that is something you can do with pure script or Haskell, which is quite nice. In Elm, you can't, so you have to be clever. And, and we know that on click. So like what needs to go here on click? Anyone have an answer? We could make a new thing called uh, get joke in my messages. Like a new, um, yep. Perfect. What, what is it called, Damien? A new what? Um, I'm being harsh because you know this. You know the answer. It's good to know the words. <laughs> does any, does any, can anyone help Damien? What this thing is that I'm going to call here? Get joke, right? It's called get joke. But what is it? What is this get joke? The constructor of that type. Oh, very, very good. It's a constructor. Yes. Yeah. Of type, my messages, right? My messages. Yeah. So get joke is like one of the elements in the. That's right. Um, I see when I hover over this though, it calls it a variant on the union type my messages. So maybe in Elm you can call this a variant. Um, but I would say in general, this is a constructor. So this is it's a constructor because it could take parameters, right? It could be get joke of an int and a string and uh, whatever, right? Anything. It could even take a record, like something with a name that has a string. I think sorry, it's a single colon, right? So yeah, I can, like a constructor of type my message can have, it's like the way to create a my message. And like, if you think about it, it's like, it, it's it's not, so when I say constructor, it's not, it, it's like analogous to like class constructors in an OO world, and it's a little bit more powerful. So it is the way I create a, a my message, absolutely. Either I can 
make it an increment or a decrement or a reset. None of these take parameters. They're all like um, void constructors or whatever you'd call them. Uh, set random does actually require a parameter and a set joke, but they all construct the same my messages. There's no way of like saying, you know, I couldn't construct a my message any other way than calling one of these, right? But of course, I could create a constructor with the same name as the type. And this is where things get very confusing. And this is common. So it's like my messages is a constructor of the type my messages. So that's almost like saying a void constructor or something, you know, if you're looking for, if you were stretching for an analogy. But yes, cool. So get joke. Okay, good one. So we're going to make a constructor called get joke. And on click, we're going to call get joke. Brilliant. So look, no compiler errors now because the compiler is saying, yes, these are I've typed my messages. So our view is good. We now got errors up here saying this case does not have all branches for all possibilities. So we do need to now handle the get joke thing that is now coming in. So clicking this button is going to generate a get joke event, which is now going to get pumped through update. And because we're not handling it, and we are guaranteeing that we will return a new model and a command of my messages. And in this case, we wouldn't. So like, that's an error. The compiler is not going to be happy. So we have to handle that event. Um, so this would be, what did we call it? Get joke. We're going to handle the get joke event. And then what are we going to do with it? What should we do with it? Anyone? I think the model will stay the same. Yeah. Unless you want to change what the button says, um, like fetching okay. or something. Um, That's a cool idea. So we do that. Yeah. Okay. Change the model. So what are we doing? So I go, I think it, I'm going to update the model. So this is our record update syntax, right? It's a, bit, it's a bit clunky, I agree, it's clunky, but it's like model with something changed, right? Something equals something. So you're saying change the button text. That would be cool. Of course, we need a place to, so like if we wanted to put the text down initially, we'd need to be pulling the text out of the model, right? If we're going to render the button text, am I right? Sure. Yeah. So should we start by going? So would you store that in the model though, or not have maybe a flag that you would use to determine which text to show? So like a Wait, ternary we, operator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But where, so what would the flag, uh, I mean, where is this flag? So the so flag put, would be in the model then. Yeah, it would be in the model, right? Yeah, yeah. So we've got to, we've got to change the model at least. Correct. So it could be like, so if you're saying it's a flag, we could say fetching or something. Fetching is a bool. I mean like that. Is that a good enough yeah. flag for you, Miguel? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So we're going to go fetching is a boolean. Now we just follow follow compiler errors. So it's like, oh, okay, cool. So this is our latest one. I'm using question marks. It's probably a bad one. So I'm going to go like maybe fetching equals true here. Something. What do we do with the command? Is this the right way to do it? It's fetching. Not just fetch. Oh, sorry, yeah. And I think true has got a capital T, annoyingly. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, and why has it got a capital T? There's an interesting question. Because it's a constructor. Yay, of talk what? Of talk what? Boolean. Yay, you got it. Man. It is a constructor of type Boolean. Isn't that amazing? So in fact, Boolean is like not built into the language, if you think about it. It's like I could make my own Boolean. I just go data Boolean equals true or false. There, I've just declared Boolean again. You know what I mean? Um, sorry, this would have to say type. Sorry, Elm. Elm calls that type. Most other languages call it data. Um, so that's really nice. Like the minimal language has got very little in it uh, because you can start with, you can create types, uh, which is awesome. Um, okay, so we're doing that. And then what is our, 
the, the second parameter we return from update is like, it's a tuple of model and command of my messages. What do we return as the command of my messages? It's Wouldn't that get function that we... One at a time, guys. Go, Miguel. Oh, I was going to say, uh, just doing the HTTP call, which I think Damien was going to say. That's why I said go for it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes, exactly. Perfect. Yeah. So here it is, Mubesh. It's like, yeah, we need a command of message. So it's like, perfect. So get gives us that. So get with that URL and this expect gives us this message. Interesting look here, like message is used twice. You see that? And these are the same. So when it's a type variable and it's called MSG like this, that is the same type variable. So that tells you like they are the same type. The command, that, that MSG, that type variable, must be the same as that type variable. So from a compiler perspective, a compiler can infer that. So if you specify this one, it will infer that one. If you specify this one, it can infer that one. You know what I mean? Um, and you'll see how like that kind of rolls out. But like, okay, so we're going to call get. Oh man, click something funny. Uh, there. So we're going to call get, and we're going to pass this like weird record thing to it, which I do that. We're going to call get with a URL and an expect. We save. Oh, sorry, URL not the type. So URL equals something and expect equals something. So URL equals URL. So I could paste this in. We kind of know what it is. Uh, that one. We link, go in there. And then this expect thing is a bit weird. Um, we don't know what that is yet. Oh, man, it sucks that that happens. Uh, yet is unit. Can I unit? I don't know. Oh, expect unit. Look, it just worked. Did it work? No, it probably hasn't worked. Oh, text. Oh, there, text. Okay, interesting. Okay, so I'm just following compiler errors, right? Uh, so I've managed to, I don't know, <laughs> convince it to. So the word unit is like no type, it, has, it is of um, sort of, of no type. Yeah, it's sort of of no type. Um, anyway, I think it will come back. Yeah, I reckon the compiler will bring us back there. Um, okay, so the text here has got to be something. Um, and you were saying a flag, Miguel. So we wanted to, I mean, this obviously has to be a string. Um, we know that we've got this dot fetching, model dot fetching thingy. Um, and so we could present a different string, right? Based on whatever it is, right? So I suppose I could use an if statement here. I could go like if model dot fetching, then fetching. Does all not have a turner operator? Yeah, it does. It's called if. Uh Oh, yeah, same thing, I guess. Yeah. All languages have got a ternary operator called if. <laughs> it's an if Fair else. Sorry. <laughs> if else. I mean, is the built in ternary operator. Um, then fetching else get joke. I guess right? my better question would have been does it have the nicer looking? <laughs> the nicer oh. looking? It's less to type. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> So the interesting thing is, yeah, I suppose um, it. I don't think it does have a ternary operator, but you could easily write one, um, or can you? So in Helm, can I create operators? I don't. I can't remember. Did we answer that already? I don't remember if you can create like operators in Helm, or can you? Don't think so. Yeah, I don't think we've looked at it in Helm. Is it? Anyway, this is the ternary function. And, and it is because um, if always has to have an else in, the, in these kinds of language. You can't have this case where if something, and then if that is false, then it's like what? Undefined. Like there's no, it can't be typeset, right? If is a, if is a, is a typed thing, it's an expression. So if is an expression in this language, meaning that if has a return type, if has to return something, right? Um, does that make sense? So I could say like x equals if uh, false, then five, like that would be invalid. Um, you, you couldn't do this because what is the type of x if 
Uh, what is the value of x here, I should say? Because obviously it's an int. We know it's of type int. No, sorry, I always do the double thing. Um, but like, what happens if it's, like, what value is it if it's false? Um, so you always have to, like, if always has to have an else. There's no, there's no other, there's no other option. If always has a corresponding else, uh, which makes sense because then it is correct. Otherwise, otherwise x would be undefined and it's like, Undefined is not an int, um, and it couldn't make up a thing like, well, then it's like the zero value, which is fine for ints, but like, what is the zero value for strings, and what is the zero value for my messages? Do you know what I mean? Um, it's like those things don't have a zero value. Um, interestingly, though, in a in a in a better pure functional language, you do have types which have got empty value so you can say there's a class of things which has got an empty so things like strings and and not necessarily ints yeah i suppose ints do um or my messages have got a thing like a we call it i mean it's, it's this like monoidal idea like a monoid has got a an empty case um which is often called m empty but anyway that's like pure functional stuff um, okay, cool. So look, we've solved that one. Oh, we're back here. The compiler said doesn't know what the hell a unit is. Fine. So we've got to solve this expect thing. I do think that get probably, we probably have to include this library somehow because I reckon it probably doesn't know what that is. But let's get back to it. So it's saying it's an expect of message. So I suppose I could just click on an expect for interpreting. Oh, look, there's different ways to create expects. So expect is a type. Great. Um, here are its ways of building them. So I suppose may have constructors. It doesn't look like it has any direct constructors, but there are functions here that can create expects, which all makes sense to me. There's an expect string, which is like given this thing, I'll give you back an expect of message or an expect JSON, which given some decoder thing will give you an expect of message. And expect bytes and expect whatever. That's also cool. So like expect whatever. Given this thing, we'll give you back an expect message, and that's it. So you can expect whatever bytes, JSONs or strings. Maybe we start with string initially because we just wanted it like to work. And let's get back the. So we can see that when we hit this API, we get back this thing as a string. We know it's JSON, but in the future we'll pause it as JSON. Let's just expect it as string for now. Why not? Start with the simplest case. So we're going to go expect string. Expect string. And expect string needs something. So it's like an expect string of who wants to help decode this? What does expect string take as its first parameter? A method that takes in a result of error string or returns a message? Yeah, awesome. Yeah. A function, call it a function. Like sure. Yes. Yes, exactly. If I translate your or your C sharp, it's correct. Yeah. It, it, so its first its first parameter to expect string is a function. We can see it because it, there's the magical function arrow. And because it's bracketed, we you know this is the first parameter, right? That's what expect string returns, but its first parameter is that. And that is if you read that, it is a function because of that, which takes a result of type error string, of type error and string. So this is a const, this is like a type specialized on two things, error and string, which will return a message, that function. And it itself returns an expected message. Okay, cool. So probably if we give this, if we give it this function, um, we will get back our expect message. And probably that type means the same as that type. So let's look at a crappy, a crappy example. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, I like this example. This is a nice one. Um, so here you can see that they're doing exactly what we're doing. Ignore the fact that this is like not in a, it's not in the update function, but it doesn't really matter. We can see what they're doing is they're calling HTTP.get expect equals HTTP.expect string. That's what we're doing, and they're passing got text. And it's like, well, what the hell is got text? And if you look up, you can see in their example, their message type has got a got text of a result error with string. Does that make sense? 
So it's like, it's like, it's, so when you look at this, it's like, actually, like the, it's interesting because effectively, like I know it, it looks encoded at the moment, but it's like, oh, it's just a constructor of my message type, which is constructed with these things. Because that is what a constructor is. A constructor is a thing. So like, for example, if I look at, let's make a new constructor. So like thing or something. What is the type of thing? If I just say, hey, well, what is thing? Thing is actually of type, if I say thing of int, thing of, what is the type of that constructor? It's actually, it's an int that gives me a what? It's a function my that when given an int, yeah, returns a my messages. Exactly. That's exactly the type of thing. Um, and so get joke is of what type? So get joke would be get joke is of type. Doesn't take anything, right? It takes no. Yeah. So then it's just of type messages. It is one directly, right? It's not a function. It's a or, yeah, it's not a function. It is already of type my messages. It's not a function. Does that make sense? So these constructors are quite interesting, actually. So if I take it, it's a thing takes an int and a string uh, and or whatever, then it's like, oh, okay, well, what is the type of thing? Thing is of type something that takes an int, then takes a string and gives me a my messages. Isn't that interesting? Super cool, right? So you can almost you can think of these constructors as functions. They are they are functions. Like get joke is a kind of a pre-executed function. <laughs> Rather, I should say set random is a function that takes an int and gives me a my messages, right? So when I look at that, you can say, ah, oh, this thing is looking for a constructor that takes a result error string as its parameter. You know what I mean? And you can and you can see it here. Got text is its parameter, a result error string. So let's just do this. So we'll just will use exactly their thing. So get joke, and I'll call it like got joke, right? So you can do a get joke and a got joke. And it takes one of those things. I don't know what this is. You have to import this thing. Uh, do I need to include this library? I think I do. Hey, I have to go Elm install, Elm slash HTTP. I'm just guessing. Sounds good. Yes, excellent. Okay, so hopefully that one goes away. Oh, I probably have to import it now. Oh, how do I import this? Okay, I'm going to go import HTTP. Do I go as? No, do I just import it like that? Yeah, okay. I've imported HTTP, meaning result comes from somewhere. We don't actually know what result is, we've never seen it. We just pasted it out of the example. Um, it can take an error and a string. So what, what is the result? If we look at it, it's actually a very simple type. Uh, result is a type which is kind of perhaps an error type and a value type. It's got two constructors, OK with value or error with error. That's awesome, actually. It tells you like, so result is a thing which can either hold a result, a, a good answer, or it can hold an error of something else. It's like a, it's like a either or type. Make, make sense? Sort of makes sense, right? Um, okay, yeah. So now we're gonna pass got joke down here. So we're gonna say expect it takes expect string and a got joke. I think we've got to disqualify these things now, right? HTTP and probably HTTP dot get there. I expect something like that. Um, oh, okay. So following the compiler, we can see we've got an error here. Anyone want to guess what it is? Yeah, we're missing fetching equals false. Yeah, okay, good. Compiler actually told us that fetching equals false. So we're not fetching anything. Save, follow the next error. Brilliant. Oh, what's the error now? We're missing got joke. Got joke. Cool. We've got a handle got joke. And it's like, oh, something. Right, because got joke. Now, when we're handling it, we can pattern match out that that thing. We know we get something here as a variable to got joke, right? So got joke. When we pattern match it out, we're going to get this thing back. But let's just call it x for now. 
We're going to go get joke X. Perfect. Uh, we've got a handle. We've got to do something with the model. What shall we do with the model? Uh, I don't know yet. We'll just go model. We'll probably turn off the fetching, right? So fetching is now false. Um, we probably want, do I go comma here? I don't know. Can't remember how to do it. I think comma. Um, and we've got to do something else there. Better like put that X into something, I suppose. And then we get a joke. We probably don't want to do anything further with it, right? Um, so what should we do with it? We we I think hopefully I can hover over X. No, I can't. Can I just make all compile errors go away? Yes, so I can do nothing with X. And it all compiles. We see if it works. Just refresh. Probably recompile it. There we go. Get joke. Fit oh. Did you see the fetching part? We look in the debugger. Oh, let's look in the debugger down here, the time traveler. Oh, check it out. So we call get joke, then we get a got joke. And it's actually got like our stuff in it, which is pretty awesome. So we can see that we get a got joke. Interestingly, like there's this OK thing in there. Uh, anyone remember what the OK might be? HTTP response? Yeah. Yeah, it was. But remember, we saw it here. When we hovered over result, remember it had like oh, it's the type, yeah. two constructors. So it was like, probably it's an OK, because it's like, it got it. It, it got an OK. And then what is the type of value here? That's string. String, yeah, exactly. Because it's like result is, so if we hover over result, we can see result takes two type parameters, error type and value type. We are, we are specifying what the error type is, and we're specifying what the value type is right there. So result, it will always be OK of type string, right? And error of type HTTP.error, whatever the hell that is. Um, I suppose we could hover over that. We can see, oh, look, it could be a bad URL, a timer, a network, blah, 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 a whole bunch of different things. We don't care for now because uh, we're not handling it. We're just going X. So, that sucks, but uh, but cool, right? Um, I suppose I could try and screw this up and give it like some weird stuff there. I don't know if this will screw it up, but let's try. Finish that. Get joke. Do we get something different? We'll give this an OK. I don't think this thing's recompiling. I think I've got issues. Get joke. Ah, look. So now I get got joke comes back with an error of network error. This is a bit difficult to read, I must admit. Like this is got joke of error dot 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 and then naught equals network error. What the hell is that? I don't know what the hell that is. But um it sort of makes sense that it's like, oh yes, it is a result where error was chosen. The error is of type HTTP dot error and we got one of the Thank God. Um, so that makes sense. So we could handle that. So how do we handle this? Who's a pattern matching wizard? Who wants to help get the value of the string out of this X thing that we've got here? Anyone want to take a crack? I vote Pavesh. Why me? Just because you look confused. So okay. Um, how do we take? We know it's of this type here. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I'll do it again with a correct one called get joke, we see that it's a, it like comes back like that. It's a got joke of OK. Go back up to the model. Uh, got joke is a result, so OK. So if you want to pattern match, I assume you would have to put a value for, uh, for the results and then a value for the actual string. Perfect. Like this. So the yep. way you pattern match is you just you do exactly what the constructor does in reverse. You deconstruct that. Right? Yeah. So there's two things we could potentially deconstruct here: an OK with value or an error with error. Yeah. So let's try it. So how do we do it? 
So it would be, what are we handling first? Let's handle the OK first. Okay. So we put OK, and then um, I'd call it value, I guess. Value, perfect. And then in, Ooh. Then we've got to put something in the model, right? We've got to like. Oh, yes, yes, yes. OK, so we, in the we, model. we've got to have a place to store it. Like we can't store shit anywhere other than the model, right? So we've got, got to stick it in the model. To augment the model to include. Yeah, a, a joke field. Perfect. A joke. Which is of type string. Perfect. Perfect. OK, uh, yeah. now we've got an error up here and that's because yeah. us, it needs, it. It needs a starting value. No jokes yet. <laughs> so a joke is going to be equal to some string with no, no jokes. jokes yet. Yeah, let's just go with that. Perfect. We'll make this better. We'll make it better. Not bad. Um, OK, so oh, yeah, so we're going to say pitching is false, but a joke is now the equals the yeah. value. Correct. Perfect. Yeah, the one thing what's that's up? worrying me is that zero equals like I think that's what's going to be in a joke, but we'll get to that when it compiles. It's, it, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I think what we've got here is right. What is my compile error there? So the compile error is we're not handling the error case. So Perfect. got joke with OK is fine, but got joke with error is not. Lovely. Okay. So, so now there's choices as to how we could do this. And this comes down to your preference as to how you write code. Either we can choose to handle it like this, get joke error with whatever the error is, and then we do something with the model, right? Catching is false, but oh joke equals now like it broke or something. I'll just be stupid. Yeah. Um, and now we're handling it, right? So th there's like a very nice way of doing pattern matching is like because remember, this whole thing is being pattern matched. So up there we go, case message on. So all of these things are patterns, meaning that we can repeat. We can repeat things like got joke with an OK or got joke with an error. The other approach would be um, also not a bad approach, but just an alternative one where we go got joke of like the value or the error, you know, some kind of named thing here. And then you case match on that thing, value or the error again of and then you go well maybe it's an okay with a value or maybe it's an error of the error yeah you know? so you could also do it like that and there's you know it's it's like up to your taste as to whichever one looks the nicest yeah you guys happy with those two versions of they really mean the same thing actually this one in my mind in this case feels quite nice because we're just handling the OK thing very nicely there and the error thing like as a separate jobby, but you could also do it up there because of course HTTP calls can fail and there's no way that Elm is going to allow you to not handle the failure. You have to handle the failure like your code. Yeah. The compiler is, in, is enforcing the correctness of the, the program. There is no so it tries its best and it does it actually very well to never allow some weird undefined scenario to happen. No matter how hard you try, uh, you cannot not handle the error. You have to handle it. Um, does that make sense? OK. Yeah. I have a question. Um, yeah. And I don't know if it's possible, but could we? So we have these two additional cases. Let's call them cases. Got, uh, got joke for OK and got joke for error. Can yeah. we put those into a separate function? and call that function here as one of the cases. Can oh, we yeah. actually those last two cases into its own function? You mean because we want to start like splitting out the handling of these different yeah. things? Because I'm thinking in like a real world app, you'd have different processes through your app. So you'd have one that does the increment decrement process and yeah. one that does the joke process and one that does yeah. the time process. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a very natural feeling to have, but the answer is in Elm, no, not really. <laughs> and it's actually very funny. Um, so Evan Chaplitsky, Chaplitsky, Chaplitsky is the author of Elm. He has this 
yeah, the life of a, I don't know which one of these. Some of some one of these videos is very good. Um, is like the people ask him that all the time. It's like, well, how do you go from one monster up? Like, if you're writing a big app, you're yeah. gonna have a massive model and you're gonna have a massive like messages type, right? Because you're gonna have everything in there. It's like the yeah. guy's name, is logged in, his profile picture, his like whether he's clicked a button, is he fetching something? And it's like actually Elm goes, yeah, that's right. We want that. We want that large, <laughs> okay. single, monstrous big loop. But it's it's definitely one of the things that you outgrow quite quickly. So however, there is um and and I can't remember like he had some talk, maybe this is the life of a file, I don't know, uh, large update function or something, or large messages or something. Um, he's pretty vocal about it not being a problem. He says, no, no, it's actually, it's good. It's what you want. But then I think in recent years, he started to cotton on to the single page app. So it works okay when it's like you're just rendering one page. You know, if it's a server side type thing, it's like I go fetch stuff from the server, I render a page. If a person clicks away, I go fetch another page. And then it's like, okay, so I can make lots of little Elm pages. You know what I mean? Like the old world of server side type rendering, right? Then Elm is perfect for that because each one of these things, you would have an increment page and a, and a jokes page, and they would naturally be separated anyway. But in a single page app where you've got like a React type app or a, an Angular app where like everything happens, um, in like browser only loads the page once and then everything is stateful inside that app. Elm is not fantastic. So um, yeah, so Elm does have some people helping, trying to build examples of what single page apps could look like and how you could go through the mission of separating pieces into different like routers and page renders and different models and all that kind of stuff. And it is, in my opinion, it's like, I think it's getting there, and like it will be okay, but it's not simple. It's like it's a bit of a fucking disaster. It's not really sold. It's not like supported well by Elm out the box today. Maybe it is today. I don't. I don't know. In my experience, it was pretty shitty. That's where you start to yeah. wrap up steam on on Elm. I what actually about- uh, was wondering that as well, and took a look at the like how did you do page in? And I think what you're on now, I ended up in there, and you start reading the code i'm not going to say i could understand most of it, but it just seems like they really do split it out and then you end up calling stuff on behalf of the framework yeah yeah like you yeah, proxy yeah. down calls all the way yes. down till it does its thing right. and it comes back up yeah which makes which is kind of what you're forced to do so i would say hey don't use elm for very large projects um um i suppose i could show you an example of so we wrote pulse in elm right um, do I have Pulse here somewhere? But let's see if I, I really do not remember this thing at all anymore, but I think it's Pulse app. Maybe an Elm. No, it doesn't look like. Maybe it was Pulse feedback. Ah, Pulse feedback is our Elm app. And you'll see that it is kind of split up into different things. And maybe we do use a single page app type approach. I think though what happens with 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 our app is we we re-render on changes. We re-render the, the page. We don't like single page app the thing. Well maybe we do, but you can I don't know. I don't know. Uh, like there's a profile page and it's got its own model. Uh, then there's like profile views. Has that got rem- remembering though that the Pulse app is just that thing. You click the link and you answer the questions and you're done, right? It's like there's nothing else to it. There's no no other pages. So like that is it. Is I think it's maybe the assignment model is the is the way. It, yeah. So I mean, Pulse is like actually not a great example of a big single page app. It's very simple. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyway, uh, it, it's not a great fit. It's not a great fit. Not not for yet. I think there are other languages. So pure script absolutely is a nice is a nice way of doing it. It's separating out stuff. Well, there's library of frameworks in pure script to do it. Um, should we get to the point where this thing actually is 
stable. Okay, where are we? Where are we here? Good joke. Fetching. Uh, a joke anywhere, right? Yeah, let's put it here. So we'll do a text model dot a joke. Isn't it cool that I can just throw a text in the middle of like a div? So you, yeah, <laughs> but why not? Ah, there we go. So if I press refresh, no jokes yet. Get joke. Look, we're getting jokes. It's strings. So that zero thing got taken away. It's a twice. This zero there. It's like it's the first parameter to. So OK is definitely a constructor. We know that. Got joke is a constructor, and then result is it's it, it's constructed with a result type, and OK is the constructor of the result type inside got joke and then i don't know this just seems like garbage to me that should say i mean if, if if this was nice it would say value equals potentially because if we remember the the constructor for result the two constructors are okay with a value but i suppose that's the type variable um so it's like it's saying okay was constructed and its first value was this it's not great that it's a zero though I don't know. Ideally, it would say value, but like, I don't know. The compiler may be not smart enough to, to do that. I don't know. Um, OK. So look, we did an HTTP call. Did, did it all make sense? So let's like recap it very quickly. We are doing, oh yeah, let's start with, we'll start with the view. Let's start with the view. We had a button. Um, that has like a variable in it in what it displays um, based on this fetching thing. And when you click it, it generates an event of type get joke. Uh, sorry, not of type get joke, the constructor, like it generates the, the get joke variant of my message. So that pops into update. We get hit with get joke. It had no parameters coming with it. Of course it could, because we could have passed parameters to it here. So on click, get joke, we could have passed five or something. You know, we could pass some variable into this thing uh, to construct that type, but because it takes nothing, it's already constructed. Um, so get joke is there. We set fetching to true. And as part of our return, we have to say, hey, what further events would you like to generate? And we say, yes, we would like to generate you a get event, like an HTTP get um, as an extra thing. Um, and in order to do that, we call this function get with a URL and what we expect. That gives us the command message. It's brilliant. It's like it's actually like so beautiful once you once you go through it because it actually reads quite well. On get joke, the model changes to fetching and we generate an HTTP get against this stuff. And we're expecting when it comes back, we expect it to be a string and we would like you to call got joke with that string, please. But then on our got joke, because we've also got to handle an error, um, the got joke takes a result of that string. Um, I think, I wonder if we look at expect, let's look at that get again, sorry. Is it specific about that? Um, the expect string, oh, sorry, can I click it? Expect string. Yeah, it gives us a result of error, and so it forces you to pass a string there. So I couldn't go like, um, does that make sense? It's actually type checking that that string there matches the OK of that value there. So OK, it's specifying string as type value. It's like we know it for a fact that it is a string without a doubt because of that expect string, specifying string there. I, I don't know, maybe that's weird, but that, literally the compiler is doing that. It was going, hey, like, because I think if I had to say expect JSON, I'm going to break it um, uh, because expect JSON needed something else. But let's say that a joke here was of some other type. Got joke or a joke. Let's just change the a joke. Yeah, so we just go, we actually a joke is an int. Say that the compiler is going to say, okay, yeah, but you've said it's a string up there. And we say, no, it's a five. 
uh, we're going to get a thing saying like, okay, yeah, but like you are getting a string here, dude. This is an okay of type string. You can't set that. So it's like, it's perfect. It's like, I can't screw this up. It is a string. Does that make sense? And it's, it's implied it through expect string there. It's pretty awesome. Okay, and that's it. Yeah, then got joke gets called, and then we pattern match. Either it worked or it didn't work, it failed. So let's make it fail again. We do that. Fresh, got joke, it broke. So we don't know the type of it yet because we're being stupid and we're not looking at what is this error thing. But if we look in the debugger, we will see it is of type network error. So we could do something with that thing to show more specifically what the what the what the error could be. So with network error, you can see it carries nothing. Like network error is just network error. It's not like network error, the IP address didn't exist or something. It's just network error, right? And you said you might say, but what if I'm giving it like what if I got like 400? That's not necessarily a network error. Like maybe I'll go random XX. I don't know. That generates some different kind of error. I assume it broke. Let's see. Ah, look at this. So we're getting a different kind of error now. Now it's an error bad status. 404. So that's not an okay. There's not a network error either. Uh, bad status now carries the status code that came with it. So that's really powerful, right? It's not just like this generic error message. It's like, no, it's an error of type bad status, which has an int of the actual status code, which is like, it's really powerful. Um, so if, if I wanted to handle errors differently, I could choose to say, actually, here's the one that handles all errors, you know, like it broke in some random way, but I could handle specific errors because I could say error, network error, like I want to handle the network error and it like broke because of network issue. Probably have to import this, it's probably an HTTP, so network error, so now, I'm handling that one different to like all other errors. This is the all other errors one, broken because of network errors, or it like could be I handle it as like a bad status, and then it's like, well, what is the code? And then I could add the code here because of bad code. And how do I have plus things like that? Maybe probably have to to string this. What is it? String dot comment. That thing. Not bad. Uh, I think I have to bracket this and that because it's like bad status gets constructed here, you know, there. So does that make sense? So I can then get the code out and I only have a code if it's a bad status. I don't have a code if it's a network error, so I can't fuck it up and try and print it. Um, so let's see if that works. I'm sure it will. It's a bad code 400. Perfect. If I made this a network error, which is I change the, the domain name, generate us a network error. It broke because of network issue. Like awesome, very type safe handling of stuff, right? Forcing you to do, to not have undefined. You cannot create an undefined where it's like, I tried to print a code. So if I tried, I wanted to like, oh yes, I want to print that code, right? Code. It's like, yeah, but where's, what's code? It's like, it doesn't know what code is. It can't find it. You don't have a variable called code. You can't print it. You can't print something you don't have. You know what I mean? So like, it's very safe. Okay, any other questions? Happiness. Did anyone follow this at all? Yes? Okay, good. Yeah, it made my uh, Chuck Norris. <laughs> repo make a little bit more sense because I was trying to figure out one of the things and just going to wrap my head around it. So it makes more sense now. <laughs> probably this bug, right? I'd say that's probably the most Yeah, I try to go down the JSON route, uh, expect ah, JSON okay. and that decoder. Yes, mm -mm. yes we haven't <laughs> done that yet. I also, I don't remember how to do it and we're going to do it fresh next week. We're going to do the decoding. So next week we're going to decode that thing from JSON. Actually, I'm going to put it here. Expect JSON is what we want to do there. So we're going to leave that compiler error as our as a pointer to the next thing we're going to do. Because yes, decoders are complicated. Because remember, we're going from this like unstructured JSON text thing to now something that we absolutely have to be type safe around. So it's like we have to 
get that funky, um, like that thing, whatever it is, we have to be able to parse this into a type safe structure before we can grab value out of it. You know what I mean? We can't just say, go get value as a string, please. Because like, well, what if it doesn't exist? You, you can't have something back that doesn't exist as a string. It's like, that would be weird. You have to be very type specific about it. Um, yeah, but it, it, is, it is a bit of a mind show. So we'll, we'll go there next week. All right, guys. Thanks, dudes. Have a great week. Thanks, Tom. Cheers, Tom. Cheers. Thanks for the session, Tom. Yeah. Thanks. Cheers, guys.